Welcome back to the channel. Today we start a new build. Actually, it's kind of an old build. It's 30 years old already. It's a 1993 Mustang GT convertible, and it's got a little scuff up in the front end. But that's not the worst part. It was listed as a non-run and drive with engine damage. So we're gonna have to see if we can get it running so we can get it off the trailer. So let's get it down to the shop and do that. And then we can take a better look at it. Now I'm not sure if you're gonna believe this because I'm not sure I believe it still. Uh, our battery's not dead. At least it's got enough juice to ding at us. Let's see if we can get it started. Well, calling on my old school knowledge of towing these things in back when they were brand new. Yep, that's right. The reason it won't start is probably back here. That's it. All right, let's see. I'm fairly confident. If it wasn't the problem, it was a problem. Starts better than most Fords. The fact that it starts makes it better than most Fords. If you thought I could build a Ford of any kind and not pick on the Ford fans, you must be new here. Welcome to the channel. We have no brake lights. I'm pretty sure I know what the problem is. We'll worry about that later. We have a battery light that's on and we have no power steering, so I'm guessing the belt is off. I didn't look too much at the auction. Of course, the hood doesn't latch, like every Mustang. That might be our problem there. There's your problem, lady. Say we have a new power steering pump, new water pump, new fan. It's gonna need another new fan. Let's get some of this out of here and see if we can't get a belt back on it. So we'll see if we can get the fan and shroud off of there and give us a little bit of room. First we'll unplug our overflow bottle and unbolt it. And we'll unbolt our fan shroud and unbolt our radiator. Maybe it'll move around enough for us to get a little extra room, but probably not. It's only two bolts, so it's worth a shot. And it's wedged in there pretty good. Somebody once said that violence is never the answer. That guy never worked on cars. Violence is always the answer. So we're going to violently rip out our fan shroud because we need to get to the bottom of the fan shroud to get that bolt off for the overflow. And there's no way to get to it when it's wedged in there other than tear it in half and pull it up so that we can get to the bottom bolt. Now we're not really losing anything. That fan shroud was all destroyed at the bottom anyway, so tearing it in half didn't hurt anything. We got our bolt out of there. We can lift our overflow off, spill antifreeze all over the place. And all the rest of our fan shroud just falls out of there in the pile. Get the other half out, just spin it around the fan and toss that in the pile. A car with a mechanical fan. It's been a while since I played with one of these. This one's held on by four bolts. So we're just gonna see if we can get a wrench in there and get them loose. There's not much room for anything else in there. Luckily, since somebody has been here before, the bolts are pretty easy to get out. So we just need to break them loose and we can spin them out with our fingers. It's 
work our way around. There's four of them. We'll break them all loose. Get as many out as we can, but the bolts are a little bit too long and they're not going to fit there in between the fan and the pulley. Might be able to get this top one out. We'll use our fan adjustment tool. Pry it back a little bit. Give us a little more room in there. That's why we unbolted the radiator. Get a little better bite on it so we can get to that bottom one. Get that one loose. And then spin them all out of there. Now we need to pry the fan off the water pump. I think it's missing a couple legs. Was new. Yep, that's going in the pile. Now we can get our belt out of the way. So when our radiator went back into the fan, the fan went back into the water pump, and it's a little squished. It doesn't spin anymore. And that causes other problems. So we need to pull our water pump off of there and see if we can get it to spin and see if we have any other damage in there. So first we got to pull this bracket off of here. I forgot how much I don't like changing the old water pumps. We'll cut our factory zip tie out of the way. It's actually not factory, but the plastic Ford used never lasted past about 1995 on a 1993. Pull our lower radiator hose off. We can start unbolting our water pump with eight different size bolts, 10 different lengths. It did not make this easy. Working on these cars, you end up using your entire socket rail. Even the nine millimeter. So I set the bolts in different places to keep track of the different length ones and where they go. Pull our water pump off of there. And push our heater hoses off. And our timing cover survived. A lot of times they get holes punched in them when the water pump shaft goes through it. So we'll unbolt the cover on the back of our water pump. This allows us to see the impeller. Cover's got an impeller tattoo. Looks just like the impeller. And not only is that shaft pushed back, but because it's pushed back, our pulleys aren't gonna line up anymore. So we have our water pump adjustment tool. It's gonna hammer the shaft back where it belongs. It spins and a little further to get that impeller back in the housing. more hits, get it back to manufacturer specs. I imagine this is exactly how they rebuild water pumps. Not hitting our cover. Good as new. So we can go ahead and bolt it back together. Bolts to hold the water pump to the timing cover actually hold that cover on as well. Those two just hold it in place. We'll slip it in there. Put our heater hoses back on. These custom orange hoses make the car go faster. Adds like 20 horsepower. Back in the day, this thing needed 20 more horsepower. Today we have four cylinders making more horsepower than this thing made. Bolt our water pump in, slide our hose up on there. We'll tighten up all of our hoses. Drop our bracket in here. Slips over the studs that we put in the water pump. That's why we have to take it out. And then we bolt our bracket in. And then put our pulley back on our water pump. We're just gonna put the bolts in there for the fan. There just won't be any fan. But if we don't put the bolts in, that pulley is just going to fall right off. Cram our ratchet in there. 
because I'm lazy and I don't want to use a wrench. Now I am absolutely certain that there are some experts that found the opportunity to go and call me a hack for using an old water pump and hammering it back together and putting the old gaskets in. Uh, and it might leak, but I'm not really concerned because, well, there's a gaping hole in the radiator. So I don't think it really matters if it holds fluid, but now I can throw a belt on it and I'll be able to use the power steering and charge it while I'm driving it around the shop. Just makes it a lot easier. And I got to make sure that that timing cover wasn't broken. Uh, so I know if I need to order one. Now all I need is a water pump. So let's take a look at the rest of our car now that it runs and dries and we're waiting for a belt. So our airbag did deploy. You can only imagine what came out of there. Spider webs, and dust. It keeps snagging on the turn signal lever, so let's cut it out of here. I found the dullest razor blade I could find, and it still cuts right through this. I'm thinking this fabric's pretty tired. But I guess it did its job. No head prints in the windshield. All better. So it's an automatic. What else? Let's get air conditioning, power windows. Even as a Power driver's seat. Interior is actually in very good condition. It has 105,666 miles. And it even comes complete with the little tree air freshener. Black ice. Tells you all you need to know. We even got both of our keys. This is from back in the old days when you needed two keys. Now you don't even need one. Cargo net. Hey, we got a belt. We have another belt. Let's see if we can get one of these to fit and I can cancel my order. A wheel lock key. Wow. We'll have to bury this somewhere so we can't find it. That's what you do with them, right? Our door gap's a little off. The door still opens nice and doesn't hang. That's a miracle. Oh, we got a fog light. Not for this car. Let's see, what did it get hit by? Made in Taiwan. I don't know. I'm guessing that's whatever hit it. It was a Honda. I don't know what kind of Honda. One with a dent in it, I guess. No prizes. Oh, we gotta see if we got a CD in our CD player. Maybe it's vanilla ice. Maybe if it was a white GT. Oh, we got something. Tom Petty. How appropriate. Broken ashtray cover. I think they came with those from the factory. And our little pockets on the side are a little worn out. Also, Came like that from the factory, I believe. I don't see the, what they see at the top works, but first we gotta wash it up. Cause I do that now. So we got our belt on there. It seems like it was a little bit short, but I made it work. The tensioner is just very tensioned. So we'll start it up and see if we have our alternator back and got some power steering. Seems like it's working. It'll do.
So let's clean it up. Our wheels are actually in pretty decent shape. No curb rash, no corrosion. They're just a little dusty. So we'll spray some wheel cleaner on there and see if we can get rid of that brake dust. Turn them silver again. They are a little faded. Now we're just gonna wash the outside of it. That fancy little pressure washer. Got a lot of dirt on it from sitting at the auction. We'll even clean under the hood. Probably won't run anymore. Now I hope you didn't really believe that I messed with that water pump and put that effort in just to drive it around the shop and then that I washed it up just so I had a nice clean car to work on. Nope, I have other plans. I haven't gone full YouTuber yet. So most important, let's see if our top works. So much for my clean windows. Uh oh. We left a man behind. It's a power manual window. All right. Let's go to the car show. back from the car show so fun time's over let's get some work done see if we can get it apart see what we're gonna need uh, see what it looks like underneath maybe I'll keep this one no I was not joking I really did take it to a car show just like you saw it it got a lot of attention some of it positive some of it negative I brought the pizza girl with we met a few fans took some pictures and talked to quite a few people and unfortunately None of the haters showed up to punch me in the face. I was really looking forward to that. Makes me wonder if they really hate me as much as they pretend to. The show was only five blocks from the shop, so I did drive it there and back, which is more than I can say for the Ford that was parked next to me. And that's not even a joke. It was Mustang night, so the chances of all of them driving home were pretty slim anyway. So we got our hood off of there, and now since it's up on a lift, we'll take a look at the bottom. Not super clean, but it's also not bad at all. Some surface rust, nothing a little sandblasting wouldn't take care of. There's no holes anywhere. We're not building a show car, so we're not gonna worry about it. Up here, straps rust out, floors rot out. This one looks like it might have seen a winter or two, or at least they took it out a little too early before all the salt was gone, but definitely did not get driven year round. The torque boxes are nice and solid. They usually like to rot out pretty bad. The worst spot, the whole car is right there. And it's just flaking off a little bit. So enough of looking at the bottom of the car, let's do some work. Pull our wheel off of here. We even have our wheel lock key that we found in a trunk.
Okay, I don't see the other lug nuts. Somebody over tighten that one. And it keeps falling back into the socket. Let's try it again. And we're going to have to rethink our approach. We're just going to jam a pry bar in here. And we'll do this by hand. Pry bar will keep the wheel from turning. There we go. Take the brakes off. And the impact can take it from here. Now we can pull our wheel liner off. Look at that. Screws. I haven't seen a wheel liner held in like those in a while. Pull them all out of there. At least the ones that will come out. There is still a couple push pins. Pop those out of there. And we have our one that's stuck. We're going to try our first method to break it loose. Usually once you can get them to turn a little bit, they'll come out. Just want to make sure I'm not ripping up the wheel liner. It's coming out of there. Once we have all our screws and push pins out, we can pull it out of here. Kind of crammed in there. Fender's not exactly where it belongs. A little dirty. You know it's going back in that way. So we'll head over to the other side and do the same thing. And not to break these center caps. You get a little brittle. Now we've got three of our lug nuts off. And we've got all four on this side. The other one must have been tightened at Jiffy Lube. Pull all of our screws out of our wheel liner. Also hold the flares in up in the front. Actually in the back too. Pull our push pins out. And now we can squeeze our wheel liner out of here. The side has a little more room because the fender's pushed over. I got one screw. Actually two. Now we'll When that vacuum line is supposed to be taped to the frame rail, that the tape gave up a long time ago. We can unbolt our bumper. It bolts through the fender and through the fender extension. I don't know what metal board used on these nuts and bolts and brackets or what they coated it with, but they very rarely seize up and break off, even on the rustiest of Mustang specimens. Wish they would use that on all the bolts. While we're under here, we'll pull the bolts out of our bumper shocks. Yeah, bumper shocks. Man, this thing is old. Now they replaced bumper shocks with styrofoam. We'll head over to the other side, pull all of our bolts out around our fender and our fender extensions. Actually, they're nuts. And reach in there and unbolt our bumper shock. This one's a little tight. Once you break it free, it comes out pretty easy though. And there's an inspection port. Very handy to get to the top one. Just reach in through the bumper cover. Pull that one out. I'll unbolt the brackets on the top of our bumper. Pull the headlight mounting panel in as well, which is riveted to the inside of the bumper.
and it doesn't look like the bumper is going to play nice. So we're going to have to unbolt it from our reinforcement. And take it off in separate pieces. I win. Now we can take our bumper reinforcement off, and that is fiberglass. And I'm itching just watching this. Pull the bolts out of it. I'm gonna leave the bumper shock on there because clearly it doesn't want to come out. Maybe if we unbolt the reinforcement, take some tension off the shock, we get the shock out of there. Try the shock on the other side. Still not enough to get this one out. It should just slide out. But that was before they hit him with a Honda. We're halfway there. All right, plan C. Plan D. We'll just pull the last bolt out of our bumper shock and our reinforcement is on the floor. Try and get this bumper shock out of here. It doesn't want to come out when it's all by itself. Big Bertha's going to take it out. It's actually kind of wedged in there. It punched a hole in the top of the frame rail. I win. We're going to pull our front fender extensions off. Yeah, I found a use for that 9mm socket that's been collecting dust in my toolbox. Pull the one off the other side. They're pretty expensive and I don't want to tear them up, so we're going to get them out of the way. Put them in a safe place. We're not going to take the fenders off just yet. When I pull it, we'll see how much of the fenders we can straighten. We're definitely going to have to change the driver's side, but we might be able to save the passenger side. We can pull our radiator out of here, so we disconnected the radiator hose and pull the brackets off for the radiator. Put the bolts back in there so I don't lose them or I know where they go. And pull the lower radiator hose off. Reposition our drain pan. Make sure that none of the antifreeze gets in it. Unbolt our trans lines. No quick disconnects there. Old school. And our radiator is ready to come out of here. It should just slide out, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of clearance in there. Tried being nice. And we're free, kind of, caught on the trans lines. We'll untangle those, and our radiator's ready to come out. It's a shame that brand new radiator didn't last long. Now we can pull our air box out of here, clip the top of it. It's kind of wedged in there. So we'll grab our 3 8 pry bar. Pull it off the mass airflow sensor. And somehow it survived. No cracks, no broken tabs. Nice brand new air filter. One bolt the base, which also survived. And now we can get to our AC lines. Pull the little safeties off. And put the little quick release on there, little Pac-Man. Squeeze them on and then 
push them in, disengages the springs that are inside, and open them up. And then you can pull the lines all the way off. unbolt our condenser. Pull our little brackets out of there. And pull our condenser out. And we'll unbolt the baffle for our air box. Now Ford and their infinite wisdom ran the power steering cooler lines right through the radiator support. So we're gonna have to pull our hoses off of here so that we can get our radiator support off. Spring clamps, yay. We're gonna take the end of the hose off the pump on one side, and we're gonna take the end of the hose off the cooler on the other side. And then we're gonna flip flop them so that we're gonna create a couple loops and bypass the power steering cooler altogether. That way we'll be able to still drive it around and not leave a trail of power steering fluid ever where we go, at least not from there. We'll put our clamp back on this side. So our right frame rail's got a little buckle in front of the subframe and a big buckle up in the front. That frame rail went limp. A little bit back there with the double panel ends We'll be able to see a little bit more when we get it apart. Our driver's side, not too bad. The inside, not bad at all. The outside's got a little kink here above the subframe, which we are allowed to straighten, because this was back in the day when we could repair things. We capped off all of our AC lines and all of our radiator hoses and outlets, and I pulled the tank off the radiator so that I could hook the trans lines to the trans cooler just to keep any debris from getting in there when we're grinding or dirt from while it's sitting. So that's as far as we're gonna be able to go on our Mustang for today. Uh, we need to find some parts. And finding parts for these things is actually not that difficult. Finding parts that aren't all rotted out like this car should be, you know, that's a little harder, at least around here. So to find some parts may take a little look in and maybe a little traveling to get something that's nice and rust free. So we don't need all that much. I'm not sure if I'm gonna drop the engine out of it yet. The frame rails on these are actually pretty easy to straighten. This was the first recorded use of Playdonium. Uh, we could probably straighten them out with a pry bar. And you can section these pretty much anywhere you want. This was back when cars were meant to be fixed, so Ford just said anything goes. Uh, and it's pretty much just a box, so it's very easy to repair. Uh, we'll see what we can find, and that'll determine where we put it together at. And yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're thinking that this car is, you know, pretty weak, uh, you're right, but it's still safe because Ford had an idea and they built in safety with their reliability. Can't wreck it if it's always in the shop, right? No other way to keep a person safer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.